Fair warning, the following video is a review of Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, a game rated M by the ESRB due to scenes of gambling, sexual themes, and nudity. So if any of that offends you, please feel free to click on something else. Even though I got no angry letters from other 10 year olds saying I'm the devil for talking about boobs on the internet last time, I still want to be somewhat safe. And well, the only reason that I would get those angry letters is because you were caught watching breasts fly every which way last time. But knowing me, you already made it this far. After all that foreplay, after all that buildup, covering each and every other Dead or Alive game, it's time to delve back and dive deeper into the madness, the elusive, the enchanting, the extreme. The Dead or Alive games are notorious for bringing two things to the fighting game genre. TNA. Oh yes, what you may have noticed is throughout all of my Dead or Alive reviews, I've not even touched on the biggest first impression that Dead or Alive as a whole leaves the player with. I still remember the first time I played Dead or Alive 4. I looked at Kokoro and I thought to myself, holy heck, she's cute, you know the story. But yes, as a growing boy, I did look closer and figured out something. Her breasts were moving. To me, that kind of made it a little weird. It's, it's the cooties thing. That kind of thought process. Yep, in a prior video, I said that in Dead or Alive 2, Mr. Itagaki added physics to the character's breasts to up the sexual appeal of his games. But nope, that was just me admittedly reading off some other dummy's wiki page entry. Sorry. The physics are definitely there in the original Dead or Alive. In fact, you know what? A lot has changed in a year. I know much more about the Dead or Alive series as a whole. In a year, I've played through every game. I know all the characters, the intricacies, the history. Dead or Alive was called Dead or Alive because Mr. Itagaki bet heavily on either of two outcomes for this game. The first game would either gain lots of attention or wither in obscurity and die. And that's the ticket. The entire reason why the girls have the breast physics. He needed just that one ace in the river that made Dead or Alive stand out from the rest of a genre that only the dedicated could conquer. People have outcries of over-sexualizement, if that's a word, in video games today, but thankfully over the years, I feel as if Dead or Alive has matured enough to grow with its sexuality. You don't see the woman on their knees or splayed out on the ground just for the male gaze. They're that way because they got the shit kicked out of them. I'm still arguing that dead or alive sexuality should not be the thing that kills it in the public eye. That was a, that was a little rant. I'm sorry. Um, just had to get that out. This is, this is dead or alive we're talking about. <laughs> okay. Let's get, let's get to business. The Dead or Alive fighting games. Their focus was never the sexual theme. But for those who only focused on the sexual themes, Tecmo took your wildest dreams and pushed them to new extremes. Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball is a collection of summer-themed minigames featuring the lovely, 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 lovely ladies from the Dead or Alive games. It's clear that the decision to port the game over was not planned out well in advance because unlike Extreme 2, Extreme Beach Volleyball has no English voiceover in gameplay. It's Japanese with subtitles. However, the cutscenes and full motion videos do have a new English track. Speaking of, the intro video, the thing that makes Dead or Alive Extreme, Dead or Alive Extreme. In here we have a lot of very graceful and some not so graceful shots of the ladies all lounging around, set to the series theme song, Maya's How Crazy Are You. The song wasn't made for the game, but it's the most famous appearance, I would have to say. Oh yeah, That was good. <laughs> 
wait, wait, no, 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 wait, no. That... <laughs> That's not Zach's voice. Oh, I just realized that my entire line of reviews, I never really touched on who Zach is. He's the... Let's not mince words. Most famous male character in DOA. He's the cocky Muay Thai fighter with get-rich-quick schemes, a big mouth, and a penis he can never really get to keep in his pants. His Dead or Alive 3 ending has him going to a casino in Las Vegas where he strikes it rich and meets the new love of his life, Nikki. With the winning Zack and Nikki buy an island! Yeah! And Zack sends the girls of the DOA universe a fake invitation to the fourth Dead or Alive tournament, claiming it's taking place there, which explains why everyone's on the aptly named Zack Island. But then again, that's not Zack. Zack's supposed to have this wacky style to him in his voice. What, did his balls finally drop or something? <laughs> And so we get our choice of the eight maids of Milky. Again, each with all of their very own likes and dislikes. You won't see any stats like this anywhere else unless you have the game manual, so take note of all of these because we will be diving very deep. This is gonna be weird. I reviewed Extreme 2 long, long, long ago, and I sorta... kinda touched on all the meat of the game. The mini games and the gifting system. Each of the girls have their own likes and dislikes, favorite colors, foods, hobbies, etc. At the beginning of the 14 in-game day cycle, you're automatically partnered with Lisa on your first playthrough, or any other random girl on any other playthrough. The only minigame you really need a partner for is the titular Volleyball. And now I can talk about the controls. Volleyball in Extreme Beach Volleyball 1 never really focused on ball positioning and movement. The game always has a focus on timing your presses with great choice in shots and spikes. In this version, the default control scheme has two main buttons, attack and defend. Basically, spike and set. But how strong or soft you attack or defend is dependent on how hard you press the Xbox controller's button. Don't you remember how back in the day some video game consoles had analog button control? Of course not, because no games used it. E except for for Dead or Alive Extreme Breach. You still have to aim the analog stick toward the other side of the court, but it's not very lenient on shot location selection. And you even have the option to change that weird analog button scheme to a cross-stitched four-button scheme with attack and defend having two buttons each, one for soft, one for strong. So much better than Extreme 2's controls! I know they tried to simplify the game for two, but I still prefer the original system better. The other difference that makes me like this game more than two is that this is the only Extreme game that has local multiplayer. That's right, on the main menu, you can choose to just jump into the game with the option of bringing three other friends with you. They can each choose their favorite girl, all with the same stats anyway, and spike it out in 2v2. There are other activities in the game, like before. Or technically after. In each of the areas you can choose to spend time in every day, there will be an option to relax, which is a big opportunity to ogle at the ladies doing... things. And I know that before when I said the word things, it would be connotation for something sexual, but no, it's literally just things. They sit at tables, they hang out at the pool, they dance, they do push-ups. It's not really sexual in a, in a sense, but you can still stare to your heart's content. Oh my, oh, ow, ooh, ah, ooh, that's tender. <laughs> it's weird how instead of building on these scenes, Extreme 2 kind of took a step back. Well, except except for the pole dancing, because that's, that's new, but... Everything else I covered a year ago. You still have the relationship system, the other fun minigames, the casino, the gifts that Zack gives you every night, and the fact that you're playing Dead or Alive Extreme and enjoying it. Somebody once told me that she was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. 
really enjoying it. Really unhealthily enjoying it. Maybe now you're enjoying it way too much that you can't last a second without visiting Zack Island again and again and again. And for that, I have the solution for you. Dead or Alive Paradise! With portability back then, some compromises had to have been made. Those being no licensed music and the graphics took a big hit. But the trade-off is that the pictures that you took in-game were actual, savable picture files on your Memory Stick Pro Duo, and other special bonuses, including a guest character, Ryo, from a variety of different games in Japan. She's only the blackjack dealer, and you do have the option to play her on one-on-one, -on -one. but after certain accomplishments have been met, you may unlock her for regular DOAP play. But then again, it's the same game. Sans jet skis, as I don't think the PlayStation Portable could handle the water graphics. Or the lady butts in your face. Would you look at that? Two for the price of one. And, uh, from all three games, X1, X2, Paradise, I still have to stick with the original. While the graphics of X2 are great and the little bonuses in Paradise are great too, I felt as if Tecmo really hit the sweet spot in activities here. It just felt complete and polished, no gimmicks with the online, better volleyball control, and from the context, I could imagine that no other game stuck out like a sore thumb. Confession time. I only reviewed Dead or Alive Extreme 2 a year ago as a joke. It was my birthday, and I was still wiggling inside the world of internet content creator. But as the days went by, I grew as a person, as a consumer, as a critic. Opinions are liquid, especially in my world. What was once an attitude of condescension and haughtiness became an attitude of genuine curiosity and wonder. Something like this can't really be found anywhere else. I'm very sure that you've never played anything quite like this. So since then, I felt like I just had to find a way to dive into this new world. And here we are, almost a year later. Yes, sex sold me on Dead or Alive. And I am not ashamed at all. That was Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. That was Dead or Alive Paradise. And that is the end of Dead or Alive. Next week, on my 20th birthday, it's the big one. Join me for X3.